everybody, and thanks for uh, voting me in. I'm going to give you a little background on, on uh, my whole uh, floating journey. Back in uh, uh, 79, I was traveling around in India, and I imported some microorganisms with me back and uh, was really sick actually for, for many years and started to search uh, ways to heal myself. And uh, in uh, 86, I found floating. I uh, went down to, uh, to the south of Sweden and floated in a, a, a samadhi tank. I, I went in there and I stayed there for three, four hours and had uh, quite a tough time actually because uh, all my inner universe uh, opened up to me and I saw what was going on with this unbalance. So, so it was tough hours, but on the other hand, I realized that uh, I'm at the right place, you know, this is uh, where I should be and really go inside myself and try to uh, help my healing qualities. So uh, I decided to start a float center in Stockholm with two friends and we uh, we were able to find two second-hand uh, samadhi tanks. It was, you know, not many people knew anything about floating uh, in Sweden at that time. So uh, it was quite hard to, to get people to come there to pay the rent, actually. But it was wonderful to, to have the opportunity to float as, uh, as much as you liked. We, could all float. we were all enthusiastic floaters, of course. So... Uh, yeah, we did a lot of floating and a lot of experimentation in the tank. We got a lot of ideas of, of uh, building our own product. Yeah, we sold uh, the Samadhi tanks and put our own products in our center. Then my friends, they decided to, uh, that they had to focus on other things. So. Uh, I, uh, I took over the business, and at that time, too, I, when I floated a lot, I started to appreciate uh, simplicity more and more. And uh, I, uh, I wanted to have uh, more uh, quiet surroundings, so I moved out from Stockholm, which was where we started the place, out into the archipelago in, uh, out the, in Vaxholm, you know. Very quiet and nice place. Uh, I also built a tank in my bedroom out there and started to experiment even more with floating. And my, uh, yeah, my, my perspective on myself shifted a lot. Uh, as uh, most people probably find when they start to float a lot, I, I, I began to I began to to uh, see myself as the sort of uh, higher intelligence, maybe you could say, for my body, and and started to be more motivated to really take care of myself in in a better way. In 94 uh, was a milestone for me and, and maybe for floating in Sweden because uh, Olympic support uh, bought a tank from me and, and uh, all the Swedish top athletes started to float. Not all, but many of them in preparation for the Olympics then. And uh, I think many found it to be really... Uh, beneficial. They usually, uh, the comment I, I got a lot is that they liked that they could train much more without having risk of injuries, greater risks of injuries.
the rumor uh, spread more and more about my product and uh, people more and more came and asked me to build tanks for them. And I had this idea when, when, I, when I started uh, to build tanks, I had this idea to really try to keep it as simple as possible. Because to me, uh, floating is, uh, that's really the most simple thing you can do. It's, it's uh, simplicity, really. 2001, I really started to build a lot of tanks. But I've never, I've never promoted uh, my tanks because it's, uh, well, it, it's a lot of work to, to, to build them. And I do everything, nearly everything myself. So uh, it's just spread by uh, word of mouth, actually. After a while, I started to combine floating with uh, vibration training. And uh, that's a thing that you sometimes find on the, on the gyms. It's a, it's a super active thing. You, you stand on a thing and you choose frequency, and then it shakes your body very powerfully. And I found out that uh, it's a, it's a wonderful combination to have this super active thing with a super passive thing. And for me, it was also a lot about having pain, having had pain for such so many years. I had shut down my body qu quite, quite a lot. So floating was a way for me to re sort of regain my body to get contact, you know, the inner contact back. And uh, the vibration plate is, uh, is a fantastic thing to uh, really find your way deeply, deeply into your body. And then when you go into the tank, you know, you have a, they work so well together, they uh, enhance each other. Then the furthest I've sold the tank is uh, down to Mallorca. I went down there to, to, to build floating in 05. And this, uh, I mean, this is the title of my speech, really. And uh, yeah, you see, sanctuary is a word derived from the Latin sanctuarium, which is like most words ending in arium, a container for keeping something in. In this case, holy things or perhaps holy people. And uh, I, I more and more come to think about the float tank as a, as a sanctuary. Because for me, it's... Uh, I more and more have the feeling that I am I'm the god for my own inner universe. And uh, w when you realize that, uh, it's, uh, you, you get uh, more uh, motivated to, uh, yeah, to really take care of yourself. So this is, uh, I make tanks from wood, which, which is a little bit uh, uncommon, maybe. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've had this idea all the time that uh, floating is simple, keep the tanks as simple as possible. So there's no high-tech things on my tanks. It's only heaters, a pump, a submersible pump that's in the corner, and you can see the the filter is sticking out there, so, so it's, uh, I love it, of course, and it's really simple to, to keep it running. Not many things I can break down. So I've just, uh, in, in uh, Stockholm, when we started, we had a little bigger place with two tanks. But then when I went out to Vaxholm, you know, n knowing how hard it is when, 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 the, when the costs are too high every month, I just kept it very, very simple and uh, easy on myself, you know. So now I have just a small place with one tank and uh, I don't promote it. Some people find their way there. I can float and, and uh, the people who come have, have uh, wonderful experiences. 
when you float a lot, I mean, your inner universe uh, opens up to you, and uh, more and more uh, new ideas, of course, uh, surface in there. And there's been a lot of talk about, uh, a lot of researchers here, and I feel that every floater is a researcher, and uh, you've got to do research on yourself. You're going to do it, and uh, I mean, your whole history is inside of you. It's all recorded in there, and, and maybe more. So, so uh, there's so, so uh, many answers to be found by focusing inward. And, uh, and to me, that, that is what, what, a, what a sanctuary is. It's, uh, it's a safe place for you to find out more about yourself and uh, your relationship to all else. And this, uh, we all know that it's bliss, you know, to float, how wonderful it can be. But also, also, if you really go in there and uh, take a deep look around, there are other things to be found too. And uh, I, I don't know if Eckhart Tolle is familiar to you, but, but uh, he talks a lot about the pain body. And uh, there's not only bliss inside, there's, uh, there's a lot of pain too. And uh, from my experience, when you float a lot, you are going to go through these quite tough layers uh, in there. And you, you're going to have to deal with, uh, with a lot of, uh, yeah, quite tough things, actually. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we, we are all, uh, I think we're all linked together on a deep level. And these facts uh, that 300, 360 kids starve to death every hour on Mother Earth, is going to affect us all, and, and we're going to, to meet, uh, meet this when we go deep inside. And there, but it's, I mean, it's the, the float tank is, uh, the float sanctuary is uh, a fantastic place to, to really address these issues and to meditate deeply on what's going on also outside on, on Mother Earth at the moment. And there are so many... When I, when I was working on healing myself, I was going through a lot of frozen zones in myself because I had so much pain. So I had turned a lot of parts of my inner self off. And, and that was a really tough job. First, to realize that this was the fact, and then to start to try to melt these frozen zones. And uh, I found working with uh, my voice, using sound to get in there, was very, very efficient. And of course, using my breath. The breath is a fantastic tool to... to uh, you, you su can superoxonate uh, uh, your whole uh, body and you can use it also as a kind of uh, massage from inside. And uh, yeah, and especially in the tank where you, you hang freely, you can get a fantastic rhythm going and if you combine it with sound, you really can do anything in there. It, it, it's, uh, sound is really interesting. I've been, uh, I was doing a lot of uh, screaming in the tank and trying to sound like different animals. And uh, 
the weird uh, sound that, that, that a human being can, can make. It's, it's uh, incredible and it can bring up a lot of uh, suppressed feelings in you. And it's nice to know, to do it in a space where you know that no one else hears it. I mean, Mr. Lilly, he, he, uh, he mentions in, in uh, his book, um, Programming and Metaprogramming, uh, he's talking at some place, he talks about taboo programs and how to, uh, how hard it can be to access those uh, taboo programs. And uh, of, co of course, uh, relaxation is the key to, to go in there. And uh, I mean, you have to, to, to be in a space where you feel really safe to go in and take a look at those programs. And, and uh, talking about being a good god for your universe, yeah, you have all of these uh, wonderful uh, techniques that you, m probably many of you is using already. And uh, that's, uh, that's one thing with the flotation tank, the flotation sanctuary, that, that it's, uh, it's a perfect tool for integration. So you get more out of and any other techniques that you're practicing, you will get much more out of when you uh, float regularly. I found in there in the tank that uh, this, uh, this uh, with having a free will, there's one aspect of this that is quite simple and, and it, it is that you can choose to live or you can choose to die. You can choose to do things that enhances your, your health and you can do things that are destructive to you. And uh, more and more I've start, uh, started pondering on what's, uh, what, what, wh why is the world so, so, so tough? Because I've, I find a lot of phenomena out there that is, uh, that scares me, really. And uh, what, what programs is it that we deny to look at? How, how can I find an explanation to, to all, all the violence and all the negativity that's going on? And uh, I feel, when I look out into the world, I feel that there are many, most things that people do ha has something to do with wanting to stretch out your life into the future, wanting to live. And, and uh, probably just go on doing that. I mean, who, who wants to die, really? And if you, if you want to die, when do you want to die? Most of us want to live for a little while longer, anyway. And, and uh, I started to, to, uh, I started to ponder on this. And then I, I, I found th this, there is a program that says, uh, you, you can't live more than, I mean, what's normal in this society? Maybe 85 years is normal. And uh, most people agree on this. If you, if you start talking about that, maybe, maybe you, you, you can become a really good God for your inner universe and take care of your body in a manner that the cells will renew themselves uh, perfectly. And, and it's not... Uh, I feel that not many people uh, think about this, that it might be possible. And uh, as evolution goes on, things changes. 
And uh, I can't help when I see the world around me and I see, for me, an immortality project that is very, very popular is to gather money. As much money as possible. It's, it's uh, many people does this and, and uh, it doesn't make you live forever. No matter how much money you gather, uh, it, seem, it doesn't seem to work actually. So I, I, I've been wondering what would happen if, uh, if, a, if a, quite a big group of people would start meditating on, uh, well, may, maybe, maybe it's possible to, uh, to take care of your body in such a way that the cells renew themselves perfectly. What would this mean if, if many people learned how to do that? How, how would it change the way we, we, we go around on Mother Earth? It might be, it might be that uh, the culture, I mean, we as a species are ready to start to, you know, play around with these ideas. And, uh, and see what happens. Because uh, to, to me, when, when I look around me, I see, I see a lot of rational uh, things happening all the time. And it's very hard to understand why. I mean, we, we have all these resources and most of us are quite decent people. So why, why is it like this that uh, 360 kids uh, starve to death every, uh, every hour? And it, it, uh, maybe it should be the number one priority to do something about it, but it doesn't seem to be that. So, so and uh, also from... Uh, from uh, Sustain, or oh, what's the English word? Sustainability. Uh, this is maybe a little bit morbid, but uh, when you look at uh, how many people dying on Earth every second, and uh, 277 pounds of dead humans have to be taken care of every second, and most of it, it is rather poisonous. To me, you know, it's, it blows my mind when I think about it. How, how did we get there that, that we are, you know, risk, uh, we, are, we poison ourselves? And, and uh, it, it seems like that, that it seems like that most of us believe that we are immortal and we don't have to ponder on these things. We, we, we push it into the future. Uh, when you, as, as I did when I, when I had my really uh, bad unbalance in my body, I was slowed down, really, and I started to see all the old people around me, I, I didn't see them before. And, and maybe the sick people in wheelchairs and, and things. And, and my whole perspective on life changed. I was quite fast before and I, I, you know, I had a lot of activities going on, so I never thought about these things. But when life slows you down, things change. But, but to me, I find that, I don't know what Mr. Lilly meant about taboo prog uh, programs. Maybe he thought about uh, programs about sexuality too, which seems to be a little bit taboo too. But uh, talking about death and dying and growing old and uh, maybe feeling that it's it's, it's not a fun thing, you know. 
uh, is a little bit taboo. And, and uh, to talk about something a little bit else, it's, uh, I, I find the, the, the flotation sanctuary to be, it, it's, uh, it's a perfect place also to, to break the cultural uh, trance that we're in. I, I have a feeling that there's, there's so much uh, information coming and uh, the speed is so high, so it's, it's, uh, it's really easy to get uh, dragged into this, uh, this uh, very high speed. And also uh, this trance state, uh, it's like we uh, unclutch from Mother Nature and uh, we, we forget that... Uh, we are a part of nature, and uh, uh, maybe uh, in this immortality context, you know, it, it would be wise to, to create per a personal relationship, to deepen our personal relationship to the sun, for example, where the energy comes from. It's... Uh, the sun runs this show in, in, uh, in many ways. I mean, when, you, when we're out driving our cars, uh, the petrol, everything comes from the sun. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe if you focus on this and meditate on this, you will get guidance uh, how to how to live your life and how to be a positive change on earth. 